looking for your daily fix of sports. How's everyone doing today? Welcome back to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Manny Maradiege, live today on Tuesday, June the 11th, to talk some more NFL with you guys here today. A lot of newness starting with mandatory minicamp starting and also learning some new things as you do throughout the offseason. We're going to start off today talking about the former New England Patriots running back Damian Harris going at his former coach Bill Belichick and what he had to say about how Bill Belichick was responsible for that collapse in 2022. Then we move on to more mandatory minicamp discussions. The rest of the NFL began their portion of minicamp this week. We're going to get into some storylines that have to do with some of those teams starting up this week and also some more running back rankings, this time in the NFC South, talking Buccaneers, Saints, Falcons, and also the Panthers and ranking their running back groups in a later segment. So stick around, those stories and much more coming up on today's episode. Remember to like, follow, and subscribe to the show. And also, if you have any questions or comments, Use the tip and donations link, gsmcpodcast.net. By using that link you see on your screen, I'm able to see your question or comment on my screen, and that way, read it on air and get your guys' thoughts or perspective on anything I have to say or on any of the topics on today's show. It's a massive help for this show as well as the network, so please, if you would, use the tip and donations link, gsmcpodcast.net. But we can start off with the first segment, like I mentioned before. Damian Harris talking about Bill Belichick and the transitional period, really still the transitional period between the New England Patriots and this new New England Patriots team that we see now. 2022 was sort of the bad tail end of the last era, the last, you know, glorious era of the New England Patriots. Then from then on, it sort of dipped and sort of declined from then on. And now we find ourselves hopefully on the incline and hopefully on the way back up with a new coach, new scheme, new players coming in, new quarterback. Hopefully for the Patriots, it is turning upside. But for right now, we're going to focus in on 2022. And former running back of the New England Patriots, Damian Harris, announced um, before his retirement in March. And throughout the offseason, he appeared on various podcasts, one of them being the Athletic Football Show recently, and talked about sort of the negative sides of uh, playing with Bill Belichick and some things that he might not have liked during his time there. He wanted to preface before he said anything that, of course, he loved playing for Bill. Uh, He knew what Bill stood for. He had success with everything, so he obviously had the respect for him. But there were certain things that he really didn't appreciate during that 2022 year. Really, Damian Harris was not a fan of the, uh, the fact of Bill Belichick's sort of power dynamic, how he handled some situations and how he handled certain critiques or suggestions maybe from from players and how he responded to it. One of the quotes Damian Harris had on the show was, if anybody had anything to say about it, it was met with a very, very quick, swift, shut the F up. I know what I'm doing and that's it. Also, that in and in in it of itself made Harris feel like he couldn't really critique anything and really couldn't address anything on his mind if he disagreed with anything. It was either just based on the quote he used, either Bill's way or the highway most of the time, and that's how Bill Belichick sort of ran his time there in New England, or at least in this instance. And then really most of the comments on this podcast were centered around the 2022 offense and how it was run by Matt Patricia and Joe Judge. And the the players, including Damian Harris, just sort of felt that these two were not really qualified at this moment to lead them into, you know, a new era. After Josh McDaniels moved on and he found himself another job, these two sort of stepped in. And that was also another thing with uh, Bill Belichick. It always seemed like he hired from within or hired people of uh, his trust and confidence. You saw it with, obviously, these two. Uh, There was also Josh McDaniels was a part of it. There always seemed to be these three main guys that um, were always following Bo around. It was always them, the connections that they had on a personal level, I'm sure, but also on the football field. And again, they just felt, Damian Harris and the players, most of them, that these two really weren't qualified enough to run this offense compared to what Josh McDaniels just had done, especially with Mac Jones. Now to see these two come in, it did produce a pretty steep decline for not only Mac Jones, but for the entire team that year. And further on, Damian Harris commented 
Um, a few more things to say on that aspect, just basically mentioning some more on the two coaches. In an in instance in OTAs, he said, I remember OTAs, minicamp, sitting around talking amongst each other, being like, yo, how are we going to tell Bill that this stuff ain't working? I think that it is very obvious for a long time. And also said that they knew during training camp leading up throughout the preseason and everything like that before their first game that they really had no confidence in this offense and no um, just belief that this could ever work with some of the things that Matt Patricia and George were Joe Judge were uh, trying to teach them and even said that it got to a point where the leaders on this team tried to meet with the coaches, tried to, you know, figure something out, a compromise to get everybody at least on the same page and at least content with what they were going to produce out there on the field. But none of the coaches listened and it got a little bit toxic there in some points where Damian Harris mentioned that that respect level a little bit sort of dipped with some players openly mocking some coaches around the facility um, too and also mentioning some players just poking fun of the coaches and not really having that level of respect really you would it you would expect with an NFL player to his coaches if you're content with everything that's going on that was sort of lacking and that you could really see how that environment that relationship you have with your coaches just definitely is not the way you want to start off a season and why 2022 looked as bad as it did for the New England Patriots so you get to the question really stemming from Bill Belichick obviously Matt Patricia and Joe Judge have a big part to do with all of this but Bill Belichick specifically there's been a lot of talk about him why he didn't get a coaching job and why some organizations some leaders in some organizations didn't particularly want uh, or feel that Bill Belichick was the right fit for their team and it just makes me think is it more Bill Belichick's plan you know his ability to coach still or is it his maybe an ability to evolve and grow and actually change some of his stuff um, that Damian Harris alluded to you know mentioning that every answer was really just met with you know stop talking this is my way we're gonna do it like this that is if that is to be the case and it is that blunt of a response you know with Bill Belichick I think it is hard to turn away from it because you've been successful for so long. Probably the most successful coach in NFL history. You coached one of the greatest quarterbacks, if not the greatest quarterback ever. How could you now think that your way is not going to work? You know, it's hard to really peel away from that and think, um, I have to change, I have to change something. If it's worked for so long, you know, don't fix it if it's not broken sort of thing with Bill Belichick. It is hard to peel away from that and just try and change your methods if it's worked for so long. But at the same time, I think you also do have to read the room, read the writing on the wall, however you want to say it, and think of ways to sort of change some things if your players, if you get a good amount of players coming in and telling you that this isn't working or they'd rather do this or maybe they think this would work, then you could start to experiment with some things. But I think that was really the biggest failure with Bill Belichick towards the end. It was just his inability to do things differently. He always wanted to do things his way. In my estimation, just from an outsider looking in, that's how it appeared to me. And Damian Harris sort of backed it up with some of the quotes he made. And now, uh, does this mean Bill Belichick isn't qualified to coach anymore? I don't think so. I think he could coach in some teams right now. If you look at some that I wrote down here, the Jets come to mind, the Buffalo Bills also, the Giants the Chicago Bears even, the Dallas Cowboys, maybe Philadelphia, they're in a good spot right now. They're loaded, so I don't think they'd have a bad season to fire a coach. But those five that I mentioned previously, I think have a good opportunity to change coaches at some point this season or maybe next offseason as well. If you look at the Jets, very much riding a lot of pressure on their shoulders. They have a lot of eyeballs on them. They're on prime time for every other week for the first eight to nine weeks. So if things go wrong, it's certainly going to get loud there. And Robert Sala, you know, he has been there for a couple years now. That could be a situation. Aaron Rodgers even said it, you know, if they don't perform well, most of them are probably out of there. So I don't see why Bill Belichick couldn't have that as an opportunity. Maybe in the AFC East, you don't want to play against the Patriots. Okay. But that could be a, a situation that could fit him. The Buffalo Bills, again, same division, but if they do pretty poorly with a new offense and it just doesn't click, McDermott could be gone, and that could be another opening. The Giants, he has those personal connections with the Giants, but I don't think it does meet up too much. It is an opportunity, but 
The Giants are sort of getting younger, wanting to rebuild. I don't know if Bill Belichick would want to be there that long, but that is another option. The Chicago Bears is probably the most intriguing one just because they have a very solid team right now, a very young quarterback that is a generational talent to learn from one of the best coaches in the NFL and just in NFL history, I think would be a great match for the Bears and Caleb Williams. Again, Matt Eberflus, a defensive-minded coach, sort of like Bill Belichick, so um, you could take it with a grain of salt there if you want Bill Belichick in there and consider all your options, but that is another spot. And then the Cowboys, of course, Mike McCarthy is in the last year of his deal. You know, you could get better with Bill Belichick. It is in a dicey situation as well with the contracts and the salary situation that they're dealing with, but they are options out there. Bill Belichick can certainly improve over some of these guys in these positions. I believe so. I think he'll get a job next season. I truly do. I think this is just one year where everyone's sort of come going to come to the realization that one of the best coaches in NFL history is just sitting there. It's going to get enticing to reach out to him, I'm sure, during the, the season if things are going bad. And we're definitely going to hear more about this as we go on. But that'll do it for this segment of the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. We're going to go to a quick break, and when we return, we're going to talk about some more mandatory minicamp storylines. The rest of the NFL started theirs this week. We're going to point out some things to look out for with certain teams when we return. You're listening to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. 